Hey everyone, it's me, Jonna, and today I'm going to be doing a full book review of The Bell Jar by Sylvia Plath. This has easily been ranked in my top five favorite books of all time, being that I've been into Sylvia Plath for the longest because of her poetry and she's just so good at what she does. This book basically gives you kind of an insight on her thoughts and exactly what she was going through through the lens and the gaze of Esther Greenwood, which is essentially her. This book was published in 1963 in January. This is basically a coming of age novel, except you basically see the downhill spiral that Esther Greenwood goes through, essentially Sylvia Plath has been going through. Most of the things Esther Greenwood went through, Sylvia Plath went through, so it's kind of eerie in that way, but it's beautiful at the same time. And as sad as it sounds, Sylvia Plath really did make depression beautiful and poetic and she did amazing so I applaud this book this is amazing I literally stayed up two days cooped in my room just reading this I almost did not go to work to read this book it was that serious so invest invest <laughs> so to kind of familiarize you guys with the plot line the plot was basically about Esther like I said before going to a downhill spiral but before that, Sylvia Plath does an amazing job in just chronicling her happy moments. So it's not really a book about depression, but it's a book about how she easily just went into that state of mind. So it's not a book that will keep you, you know, crying. It's a book that will show you that people with depression are people as well, and they have had lives before their illness took over. So this book is just amazing at portraying that. And basically what had happened was, hashtag what had happened was, Sylvia Plath was in real life, as well as Astrid Greenwood, flown to New York from Boston, or from college, to basically be part of a magazine collaborative. She basically really tries to come to terms with what it is to be a woman in the 1950s and is just totally overwhelming and she wants no parts of it. Like, she does not want to get married. She doesn't like kids. She just is really overwhelmed with the responsibilities she's given as a woman. And she also doesn't know how to cook. So that was another thing. You would think people from the 1950s are really just uh, domesticated and are homebodies, but no. Esther Greenwood really knew how to break down walls. This book is basically about Esther trying to understand herself and understand others and why they were so different from her. And I guess she felt othered and she felt really, really just estranged and she felt like she didn't belong so one side it was like I'm gonna do whatever the hell I want I'm an independent woman the other side was like I want to be a homebody I want to be a good wife it was like her battling those thoughts at the same time and that essentially is what drove her mad so when she finally finished with her whole trip to New York and her whole magazine collaborative she went back to the suburbs of Boston um, to her mother's house and that's where she just went downhill like that is where she just felt like she had nobody and she had nothing to live for it's just really sad it's just like you could really believe it it's it's tangible it's there I could really relate to Esther and her struggle to just come to terms with herself and understand herself and the people around her and I just think it's really important to read this book because it's something that I feel like people who haven't had depression would enjoy mainly because that would really just further their knowledge and help them understand people with depression while it's very sad it's still very important to know and understand and I feel like depression is something that's so belittled in our society and it's such a taboo and I want to just let you guys know that it's not and then if you are there's always someone to talk to I'm here plenty of other people are here for you so don't forget that and this book really just brought that to my attention that it's so easy to get lost in yourself. It shouldn't be a taboo and this book does a great job in chronicling that entire downhill spiral. Negatives about this book. The only thing I can kind of say that annoyed me at certain points was the jump cuts. While they were pretty seamless and beautifully written, 
I just don't like that I had to kind of think which kind of time period I was in because one moment we're in the past, one moment we're in the present, and you have to really be paying attention. But after a while, it becomes second nature and you get used to it. But in the beginning, I was like, what's going on? Am I in the present or am I in the past? It was really confusing, but if you're the type of person to get frustrated with that and you can't understand the book, really give it a chance because it's so beautifully written. It's pretty minuscule compared to anything else I could probably say, and I can't really think of any negatives other than that, so... Yeah, I guess we're done with this review. I just really love this book. It was a joy to read. I, I would reread it again if I didn't have such a great memory, but yeah, um, I guess that's it. Thank you guys so much for watching, and don't forget to subscribe. Follow me on Twitter, I just made one. And yeah. So, I just realized this was in the mailbox, and I've honestly been waiting for it for like two days. I did not expect it to come today. I expected it to come tomorrow. So I'm kind of excited to show you guys what I got from eBay. This is not a good idea, but I'm doing it anyway. I got it open. Alright guys, so here it is. It's the unbi- it's the autobi- I can't speak English. The autobiography of Malcolm X. As told by Alex Haley. Excited or not? Prepare for a review of this autobiography. I'm really excited about this. As you can see, I couldn't even form English. What is English? I can't wait to read this, so yeah, it's pretty lengthy, but I'm ready. Bye, guys.